Data intelligence, what is it, why do I need it, and how do I go about implementing it? To help us understand the answer to these questions, I'm joined by the ASG Customer Innovation Award winner, American Fidelity's Mark Nance, and thought leader on the topic of data intelligence, ASG Susan Lane. Welcome to both of you. So the first big question, I guess, is what is data intelligence? We hear so much about it, but what is it? Well, first of all, it's a solution that helps clients understand their data, find their data, and find value in their data. And the components are really centered on a one-stop shop to come and get all of your data needs, as well as um, define the information. So being able to understand it from a business point of view, which is our business glossary, and then everything is um, centered around what applications do I have out there and how is the data flowing between those applications um, and being able to support things like compliance and um, projects like moving to the cloud, impact analysis, and uh, just finding that true authoritative source of information. Data lineage is one of our, um, our probably most used uh, components where clients really seek us out to be able to understand data. And what that's doing is it's helping departments um, look at data from a much more broader perspective. And it's actually keeping clients honest or keeping different lines of business honest in being able to protect that information as it disseminates across the organization and making sure they're not sending bad data around to other departments and things like that. That's a great point. Mark, when you think about data intelligence, what does it mean to you? Data intelligence to me is just learning as much information as possible about your data. <laughs> I like to boil it down to make it simple. Data, I look at data like ingredients and there are certain things that you want to know about ingredients. If you're using them to create a recipe, you want to know if they are fresh. You want to know where they come from. You want to know how long they've been there. You know, you want to know how, what quantities to use them in. Mm -hmm. Data intelligence can answer all of those questions for you and help you to actually apply that data in the right quantities to achieve your outcomes. I like it. Susan mentioned data lineage. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively new term, uh, certainly to me at least anyway. Um, how important is data lineage in the context of, a, I guess, a regulated business? I think data lineage is incredibly important because many times you have to understand where that data was sourced. You have to understand where that data sits on a daily basis. You have to understand who's consuming it. And the only way to do that is to understand where that data is flowing. Fabulous, all right. So I guess the next question is, um, how do I start implementing data intelligence in my organization? I think you have to start by just determining what data you have. We need data intelligence to be able to get our arms around the data, get our arms around the complexity of what we're seeing out there in the different systems today, and to be able to serve it up to the business. Uh, we see a lot of um, delays in the business being able to get the right answers, to even get their hands on the data, to find the data that they need. So the data intelligence gives them that and more. How to find value out of the data connects that business head to the body of the physical information and, and gives them that true broad story of what's going on with the data. That sounds great. Mark, you were at American Fidelity. Why did you believe you needed to look at data intelligence? What situation were you in? Well, in many cases, um, in any data environment. Um, people talk about big data today. Yeah. They talk about getting data. They talk about having data. Uh -huh. But in many cases, they don't even know what data they have. Um, and it's around getting a handle on what data that you have within your ecosystem. It's about what data exists that you can add to it. And it's just about being able to categorize that and, and let that data um, have context. Let that data have definition. Uh -huh. Let that data have meaning. Really, if you want to boil it down, it's about speaking the same language. So let's ensure that everybody understands what that data represents and how we refer to it. What sort of situation would people find themselves in if they weren't practicing, I guess, data intelligence uh, effectively today? How would they know that they had a problem? Does that question make sense? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we've seen a lot of failures with getting to um, the cloud environments, with being able to uh, have a good, clean, big data environment mm -hmm. instead of a data swamp. <laughs> um, and, and just from a, an analytical point of view today, the, our clients are definitely wanting to have really good insights from the new technologies that they're trying to deploy. Mm -hmm. So without 
really understanding what the data is and where to find it, they're, they're not succeeding at those projects. It's interesting. Yeah. How, from your, I guess from a commercial standpoint, you know, what sort of symptoms do you look for that say, well, maybe data intelligence is part of the solution for me? If you're looking at two different repositories that are supposed to hold the same data and you get two different answers, <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. That's pretty much every organization I know, though, isn't that right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, th and that's the problem. But that is business as usual mm -hmm. for almost every organization on this planet. It's, it, it's an accepted norm. Yep. It's something that we need to correct and that many people are trying to actually evolve past. Um, we do have the tools. We have the compute power. We have all of the necessary abilities today to deal with that where we didn't have that in the past. Yeah, it's a good point. So a question then following on from the why, I guess it starts to talk about value because you know, having two sets of data that don't agree, I can understand the problem. But as a business leader, hey, my business is running today, so it can't be that big a problem. How do you ascribe value to the cleanup? Because I guess it costs you money to, to clean this data up. One way to think about it is how do you ascribe value to maintaining all the redundancy? Mm -hmm. So it's it's either one way or it's the other. Yeah. So do we want to be efficient and effective or do we want to just let it ride? Mm -hmm. um, I would always try and fall on the side of let's be as efficient and effective as possible. Let's actually get people speaking the same language. Let's, let's have people understand the context. Um, it brings everything together. It's a great point. Susan, as you speak to organizations around the world, I suppose, um, do you find that they are struggling to, I guess, build the business case for the investment? Or how do they build the business case for the investment? You know, it used to be a lot harder than it is today. Yeah. Um, I think that some of the new compliance initiatives that are out there, like GDPR and CCPA, mm -hmm. is really forcing uh, clients to, to, it's a mandate to be explainable now, yeah. a mandate. Mm -hmm. And um, so the ROI isn't as big as it used to be in the past. And these are usually things that clients have wanted to do for some time. Mm -hmm. They've wanted to be able to have a centralized knowledge base. And um, now these initiatives are, are becoming more affordable because they have money that they can apply to some of the compliance initiatives that are going on and big data initiatives and even AI initiatives. So the last thing they want is to have their latest and greatest algorithm built off of bad data. Yeah, that would be a big problem. I can see that. So, sorry, Mark, are you going to say something again? Sure. Uh, philosophically, I'll step back. Yeah. And I'll say that if you're using bad components, you're using bad ingredients, it's going to be garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. So, there's an ROI with that as well. Do you want to make the best decision you can, or do you just are you just looking for any decision? Yeah. Well said. Um, so, we kind of jumped a little bit ahead in some respects because I talked about um, budget and justification, because we're now under the how stage, right? We've agreed that we need it, we've, we've got a value that we think we can ascribe to it. Uh, how do we get started? And I guess that's always the toughest question. Um, what are the first steps in a data intelligence um, deployment and initiative? Where do you start? Maybe I'll start with you, Mark, in your organization. I think one of the first steps is actually determining what you have. Um, data is something that actually multiplies rapidly. <laughs> it appears out of nowhere. Um, it comes from unexpected sources. Um, so you need to know, you need to have that litmus test, you need to have that baseline, you need to have a starting point. Once you have that starting point, then you can actually try and build upon that. Isn't the normal answer, I build a data warehouse and um, that'll, you know, or I build a center of excellence, isn't that how I get started? What, is that what you, did you look at doing that? Many of the organizations have those already. Yep. Um, they may be done in silos. Yep. They may be done in one portion of the organization or yep. another. Um, many organizations are complex entities, so they have multiple activities going yep. on at the same time, and they don't always look at actually bringing those together. So, and that's where those things can diverge. So in terms of first steps then, Susan, are there um, other things people need to be thinking about as they're embarking on their project? Well, definitely, we just have a, um a maturity model for data intelligence right now. Okay. And what we try to guide our clients down is a four-step process. The first is um, being able to have an inventory on what data exists. Mm -hmm. So being able to um, give them an automated view of what applications are out there today and what's stored inside of those applications. Um, the next step that we do is contextualizing that information. So being able to describe what data is in there, being able to see it from two levels, a business to technical level, mm -hmm. 
given it context, and from an element level from system to system. So how is my data flowing, uh, what's feeding what, and what are the calculations behind it? Um, the next level is all about sustaining that really good information going forward, otherwise known as governance. Mm -hmm. So being able to say, okay, I have this good clean data now, I cleaned up some data bloat, I know what's going on with this data, how do I sustain it for the long run? Mm -hmm. And then finally, sharing that information. And we want our clients to be the best data sharers in the world. <laughs> so you don't want to share that, you know, bad food. You want to share the good share the clean good environments. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. On to the next one. Great point. So, and just in terms of the practicalities of it, do you, um, with something as, I guess, comprehensive as data intelligence, do you need to start with a big bang approach where it's got to be done for the whole organization at one time? Or do you, is it safe to start with a pilot? What's best practice? I think it's best to start with just the critical data elements. Okay. Start with those first. What are, what are your most important pieces of data? Start with those mm -hmm. and get as many voices active in that discussion as possible. Um, because you're going to see differences in opinion, you're going to see differences in thought, and you want to capture as much of that in that discussion as possible and boil that down to the best common language. Susan, you look like you agree with that point of view. I do. I would also say that we encourage our clients to look at, you know, where are you bleeding the most right now? Where do you have the biggest problem? Where is maybe a place where you have just a ton of spreadsheets that you're keeping track of data with, or you need to hire 1,500 consultants to come in and clean something up for you. So we want to find some really good value right away. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, uh, just again, in terms of how we get started, we've talked a bit about I guess the the hard stuff, the you know, business data and so forth. Um, how do you get this thing sponsored? Who's the person that's going to help champion this in the organization and free up budget? Um, how senior do you need to go to make a project like this uh, kick off? Of course, the more senior you go, the more success I believe you're going to have. But it doesn't necessarily have to start there. I believe it can be anyone. And I do believe that in grassroots and anybody can have a voice. And the more voices you have, as I've said earlier, the more successful you'll be. Okay, so I guess that gets me to my next question, which is um, once we've kind of kicked off that pilot, which we, I think we agreed was the best way to get things going, what do you need to do to, I guess I'll call it spread the idea virus. How do you, how do you make it part of the DNA of your organization? How do you take that initial success and turn it into more success? What worked for you? You look for people that have a passion yeah. and then let them run with it. Yeah. Um, you provide some framework, you provide some direction, you provide some guide, guide rails and let them run. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to do that. And then just facilitate conversation. One thing that I've seen work is by just going out and educating and actually looking at how people respond. If they're paying attention, if they're interacting, if they're engaging, those are the people that have passion. And those are the people that you want engaged within this process. Uh, the more that you can energize them, the more that you can actually free them up to free their voice, the more success I believe you'll have. So this is interesting because it sounds to me like this is as much a, a business issue, a technology issue, but also a communication and leadership issue, isn't it? Oh, that's, sure. that's So it's a lot of soft skills involved in success here. I think we've turned the corner on data management to using data to disrupt the marketplace, to mm -hmm. have it as a critical asset, and that asset's owned by the corporation. Mm -hmm. So it starts from the, the highest level down. If you want to turn data into an asset, you own it from the CEO level, mm -hmm. and you drive it from a CEO level. Um, and and it becomes an asset just like anything else that you have within your corporation, right? If people want to learn more about what uh, you did at uh, American Fidelity, the case study, um, where can they go? Uh, they can go to ASG.com. I believe the case study is present on their website and everybody can get to that information out there. Fabulous. And Susan, um, what else have we got on ASG.com if people want to learn more? Um, there's videos that are out there. One of the really cool things that I have to highlight is that we were in the top right hand quadrant for metadata management oh, front with Gartner uh, in that leadership pack this year, which was a great win for us. So people can download that uh, from the website? Absolutely. Fabulous stuff. All right, well, with that, I want to thank both of you for your time today. Thank you. And I want to thank you all for watching. As Susan mentioned, uh, check out more great content at ASG.com.